Hello everybody, welcome here, I hope you're doing well. It's Sunday evening now and I'm in fact editing the video for tomorrow, Monday, which is the Chopin Scherzo Opus 31 in B flat minor. You know, that's one of those recordings that I've made on my ERAR way back in 2001. It was the, the goal was to produce a CD, but of course it was never released. Time was not ready back then for a kind of double beat performance because it's not all double beat of course um, i was starting out with that but anyway i wanted to give you this video based upon that scherzo because there is something remarkable that happened or that i want to share with you you know a few months i think ago someone asked and i forgot who it was should have made a note of that but anyway what my tempo was of that scherzo well, you know that the full CD of that recording is already on my channel. I re-upload from time to time parts of that CD because I, there is something extra to share about that. And also in the future when I want to have a reference to that particular piece, it's easy when the video is available on, on YouTube already, separately. But he asked me what my tempo was of that piece. It was easy to check because it's it's been recorded. My tempo for that piece in single beat is 50 for the dotted half note. I don't think there is a, a real um, authentic, I would say, metronome numbers that goes direct metronome number that goes directly to Chopin for this scherzo. Um, and back in 2001, you have to remember um, that the access that we have today to those scores of all kinds of editions, later scores, historical ones, manuscripts, it simply was, uh, was a dream that in 2001 even the internet was already there but nobody could uh, of course foresee that what we actually have available at, the, at our fingertips today. It's, it's incredible and we, we don't realize enough how fast it changed and how powerful we as individual musicians are to do our own research not at, at, at those days we were dependent on what uh, uh, musicologists published or editors published so um, of course you couldn't uh, i couldn't um, allow myself to buy all the editions available even at the manuscripts of our facsimiles very expensive and so I played from the Mikuli edition. I thought it was a well-balanced choice. There are some issues with that edition, but it's 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 a decent edition. It's a historical one. Um, I had also the Paderewski edition, which is made maybe a little bit uh, more interpretation already, but also when you compare both, you have a very strong, a very good base foundation to start playing. And again, yeah, there was no option there back then. Today, of course, we have those possibilities. And with the question what tempo I take for that scherzo, I was curious to see if today on Petrucci, on the IMSLP library, um, perhaps there would be a score with a metronome number for that particular piece. And there is a person a pianist, 19th century pianist, Theodor Kulak. And if you haven't heard of him, it's really worth uh, looking up on the internet because he was a very talented player. He studied with Czerny. He was already in his, in his 20s, I believe, when he entered uh, so lessons at the piano class of Czerny, so to say. And Kulak made a lot of additions with metronome numbers, also for Chopin. So for the works of Chopin where we don't have metronome numbers for, Kulak is a really great source. It's, in my opinion, all double beat, clearly double beat, in the more or less historical context. So I was, of course, very curious to see what Kulak had in mind for that scherzo. And again, my tempo single beat is 50 for the dotted half note. And so it was a kind of shock to me to see that metronome number of Kulak, which is 100 for the dotted half note, exactly double or if you read that metronome number metrically it's the same and so my tempo at the time was based as i wrote in that video and in, in, in the small card on nothing more than my intuition kind of notation structure but it's difficult with the scherzo because you know scherzo has a kind of it's faster it's 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 
like not a minuet, like not a waltz, but it's 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 not a, a notation that you can really clearly point back to a normal tempo ordinario three four or four four or whatever. So it was more or less based on what I thought was appropriate for the piece in terms of affect. So affect and meaning that's a German word for well, mood is not a real translation. It's more. Um, what the piece is about emotionally, so to say, and yeah, you have also that story. I should look it up, but you will know. It. Many of you will know it better than I. Like for the Fifth Symphony of Beethoven, we have this this knocking on the door, fate knocking on the door for this scherzo as well. Ta -ta -ta -tum, ta -ta -ta -tum. But anyway, for me, it was clear that these eight notes, the triplet in the beginning, should have a clear, distinct rhythmical feel. Ta -ta -ta -tum. Da, 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 tam. You should be still be able to articulate that. So there was a kind of tempo, um, um, which would I say tempo uh, limit for me. Um, also, the accelerando on the at the end should have a really powerful, uh, well, effect. Effect then, not effect, but effect. <laughs> That was the context of my tempo, and that Kulak exactly is the same. It's not a proof that I am kind of special, but it's something that if you dive into this this way of reconstructing tempo, as we do here on the channel, and I know many of you are working on that and are sharing with me either through the comments or by mail how. Uh, happy they are they're doing that it's wonderful for me to read and how fun it is to do it's really fun taking a metronome number literally i mean seriously and and experiment with that in both ways just do it it's really fun to do but you will you will see that when you do that for a while you dis you develop a kind of taste for the things that well you might say we are two centuries almost behind, or in terms of time before, I don't know how to say that, before or behind those people. I mean, it's two centuries ago that, that Beethoven lived this. It's more than one and a half century ago that Chopin wrote his piece. Almost two centuries. So there is a lot of time between, and we have lost so much of the original authentic, I would say, feelings that those people have for the context. And that's true. We, we have lost a lot, of course we did. There is an evolution in time, obviously. But still, that's my impression. It's not more than an impression. If you work on at least trying to reconstruct, starting from these metronome numbers, taking them metrically, playing a lot of Bach, which still today, if you compare our tempi of Bach with Czerny's metronome numbers, it's, we play it metrically. I mean, Czerny, Bach... It's really an important source. That after a while, and not so long actually, after a short while, a short period of time, you develop a kind of feel for it, a natural feel for it. And you will see that oftentimes when you say, well, this tempo really works well for me, check them with historical metronome numbers, and oftentimes you will see that you are really close, if not exactly spot on, what Marshallist, Czerny or others, Gulak in this, in, this, in this case, writes. And that's striking. That will happen so often that I don't think it's a coincidence or it is a unique feature of talent that I have or other have. It's deep down, or even not so deep down, there is still this layer of authenticity, I think, that we just need to open ourselves for. I mean, otherwise, it is by no means possible that in 2001, I've played, I played that scherzo, 
then what I believe is exactly the tempo that Gulag gives for that. And of course, you can be 10% or 15% off, but that's not really essential. Uh, there is a, there's a framework that you reconstruct. That's important. But still, often you will be spot on. I can promise you that. That's strange. Or not so strange, perhaps. Perhaps that's also the reason why people overall respond overwhelmingly actually positive. I mean, on YouTube and Facebook, of course, these are social media and by times, I know, we, the discussion can get a little bit heated, but if you play these works on a concert with a real audience, I mean, you are a real audience, but I mean, an audience really present in life, then there is not such thing as, as, as a discussion that's going on. You, you will recognize a feeling yourself. If, you, if we would meet in person, I mean, there is another feeling than just over the internet. Uh, it's great to interact with you, and we have the feeling that we know each other. And when we meet, actually, I do have the feeling that we already knew each other before. But in a real concert, you have a person playing and you have an audience, or you, have a, you are a, a group that's present together. And I have the experience that the impressions for the pieces that I play like that, that people are deeply impressed emotionally with what they hear. And that is only possible when here our hearts still beat, so to say, in the things that those people felt and wanted to communicate. It's still there. And so, yeah, two centuries is a lot, but perhaps in that regard, not so much. So I thought it was worth sharing with you and hope to st hoping that it stimulates you to experiment yourself. It's so fun to do and it opens such a world. The only thing that you have to do and be aware of, if you do that, take a perspective, take a position up front take a score or take scores with metronome numbers of that time and say, well, I'm going to pretend it's double beat. I'm not going to doubt anymore. Just take the metronome and try it in double beat. Or you say, I try it in single beat and see where you come. Perhaps it works great. I can imagine that sometimes you will say, well, this is really fast or I can, cannot play that. But it's just by taking the position up front, not to be biased, but just test the two positions because that's the only thing you can have. You have double or single beat. There is no other option. I think. And see where it leads you. And only afterwards you make your conclusion. You say, well, my experience was in single beat this, my experience in double beat was that. And then a world opens. It's, it's really that. The theory comes behind. It's secondary. It's really secondary. The, the funny thing about these metronome numbers and tempo research is that we kind of have the solution. It's either this or the other way. The theory runs behind, more, mostly in scientific research or in research overall. You try to puzzle the pieces together and that gives an outcome. But here the outcome is known. That's the metronome number. And so that's really, I think it's, it's, it's amazing to do it opens a world. And Anyway, I thought it was worth sharing with you. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this. And if you have the same experience that if you work around this topic, as again, I know many of you are doing, uh, that you develop this sense of, well, taste perhaps, or feeling for those tempi as in this scherzo. I was of course really happy with that, but it was also kind of a shock to see that it exactly matched. So anyway. Hope you like this and we are upgrading or we are changing a little bit the channel. You can feel that, I hope. We will introduce, reintroduce also technical videos where I talk about really specific details on keyboard technique. You've been asking that. I will uh, start my tempo guide for works, probably starting with Mozart keyboard works. Um, but that's a huge project. There are a lot of things coming up. The Beethoven project, of course, with the pianofortes, but Beethoven overall as a recording project, a really challenging project. Oh, it's, it's really hard. Um, from the outside, of course, I 
me looking from the outside, it looked wonderful. But then comes a pianoforte, that's a new world. So many decisions to be made. And I want to share that with you. Also with the live streams, we are leveling up our gear for live stream streaming and we're trying to figure out times that works work here and work for you. Um, leveling up our gear thanks to our patrons. And they are really, really, really supporting the channel in a way that's unbelievable. On almost 85 person now, persons now. So if you haven't checked the Patreon site out, I appreciate you do. Um, it makes really so much possible. And if you haven't subscribed, of course, hit that subscribe button. Of course you will, because we are making a lot of videos around music from Bach to Beethoven and beyond. So Chopin. So... And now I have to add it further because it's already Sunday evening, 10 past 9. And you want to have the scherzo tomorrow. So, have a nice day. Thanks for watching and we see each other soon again.